Have you ever had a gut feeling that you just needed to do something or you would just enjoy something if you tried it and then you tried it and then you actually did enjoy it because you listened to your gut, you listened to your intuition? That is how I feel about Grady Hendrix. That is exactly how I feel about Grady Hendrix. I don't know what it is, but there's something about his books and it could very well just be the aesthetic of them that makes me think that I would really enjoy his work. I'm gonna trust my gut. I am reading five different Grady Hendrix books to let you guys know if my intuition was indeed correct or if it was very, very wrong. So, let's get started. In no specific order, the book that I'm going to read by Grady Hendrix are, first we're gonna start off with Horror Store. Horror Store, this book is basically about a haunted, pretty much a haunted Ikea. That's the only other way that I can describe it. It's a haunted Ikea store, okay you guys? Every single morning, almost every single morning, the employees walk in to find that the furniture has been messed up or mistreated in some way or another, even though no employee or customer has been in the store throughout the night. So in order to find out exactly what is going on because this store is losing a lot of sales, the manager assembles a team of several employees to basically stay overnight and figure out what is going on and get to the bottom of it. And indeed the store does happen to be haunted so there is that supernatural element to it. So that is the first book that I will be reading. Again, don't know if I'm going to be reading it in that order. The next book that we are going to be reading by Grady Hendrix is We Sold Our Souls and this book is all about this woman, her name is Chris, and she finds that her life is not what she expected it to be, but I mean that's pretty much every adult, right? <laughs> we are not what we expected, where we expected to be as kids, as teenagers. And she really, really thought that she was going to go far with her band, with her music. However, under unexpected circumstances, she ends up working at a Best Western once she is an adult. And that dream of being a rock star just sort of fell out the window because she took a deal, got a whole bunch of money, but in return she was not able to play any sort of instrument or else she could get sued by these people that took over her band or label, if you will. And apparently, not only in that contract did she get money, she also sold her soul to some very, very bad demonic entities. Now the next book that I plan on reading by Grady Hendrix, Grady Hendrix, is this one right here. I like it because it's peaches. And this is called The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. This is basically about a woman named Patricia and this takes place in the 80s to early 90s and it's about a southern book club and our main character Patricia. She is a part of this book club that used to read very light and fluffy novels but Patricia finds that she's not into that so another girl decides to make her own book club where they read nothing but true crime and gore and all that stuff and they get really into it and so you have these innocent little housewives reading all this gritty like gory true crime and then children in a nearby neighborhood start going missing and they start to think that they have a vampire in their midst or our main character thinks that there's a vampire in their midst but something is definitely up with the town and there's something very suspicious about the brand new neighbor that moved into their town. The next book that I plan on reading by Grady Hendrix is How to Sell a Haunted House and this one again this cover is just so darn cute. It's just a little itty bitty miniature house. And this book is basically about our main character whose parents pass away at the beginning of the story and ever after her parents pass away she has to go back to her mom's house and basically clean up and her brother, her good for nothing brother that she's never really gotten along with is there and together they clean up this house. 
However, the house is very disturbing because her mom had a fascination for puppets because she used to be the puppeteer, I guess, at the local churches and she used to host a lot of like puppet shows. So her house is covered in puppets. And there's one puppet in particular named Pupkin who creeped them out the most. Not only was it her mom's favorite, favorite puppet that she had since childhood, this puppet was just everywhere with the mom and it just gives them the extra little itty bitty creeps and the irks and the puppet is haunted causing the whole house to be haunted and from there that's where the story I'm assuming ensues so there's that one and lastly but certainly not least we are reading this one is by far probably my favorite cover of all the books. It is my best friend's exorcism and it looks like a VHS tape. It's so retro. It's so 80s. Like I love this cover. It even says like please be kind, rewind. Like it looks like a VHS tape. It even says VHS at the very bottom. Like come on. Come on, this cover is just gorgeous. But basically, these are about two best friends, Abby and Gretchen. And basically, Abby and Gretchen have been inseparable ever since they were little kids. And growing up, they just are super close. And one night, they decide to sneak out of their house and go to the lake and take some L-E-S-E-D-E's. You know, some of the Droganas. Now throughout the night, Abby and her other friends that are there start looking for Gretchen everywhere and they cannot find her till the morning and they find her and Gretchen is cold, she's wet, and she doesn't even remember the night or how she got there. Even though the other friends, including Abby, did not feel that Elia said they did the Drugas, Abby believes that it is because Gretchen did feel the effects of the Drugas. However, after that fateful night, Gretchen begins acting a little bit strangely. She says that there's hands that are all over her and she feels like she can't close her eyes because every time she closes her eyes, she feels these hands on her. She cannot take a shower, so she starts to stink and she needs Abby's help. And little by little, Abby starts to think, well, maybe, hmm, maybe she's possessed and maybe she needs an exorcism. And so that is what this book is about. So very excited to read this one as well. So those are the five books that I plan on reading. So uh -huh, we'll see how that goes. So let's just, let's go ahead and get started with this reading vlog, shall we, shall we, shall we? All right, so I have officially started my very first Greedy Hendrix book. I'm starting with the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, just because I feel like this one and My Best Friend's Exorcism are like the two most famous ones, and this was the first one that I owned. So I started already, I'm on page 16. Um, I can't really give an opinion on it, opinion on it yet, because it's, I'm like barely on like the second page of like the first chapter, and I just read the prologue in this. And I mean, I can say that so far the writing is a little bit, the writing style is a little bit more unique. It's different than what I'm used to, but I kind of like it. So that's my initial thoughts. Hi you guys. So I am officially on page 133, chapter 13 on Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Finally, something is happening. It took over a hundred pages and I was it was starting to get really dull. So I'm glad the horror is coming in. However, I think something happened to the dog, but I'm not sure. And I'm like, please tell me the dog's okay. I'm like, okay, the old lady's fine, sure, whatever. What happened to the dog? Oh that's the thing about horror is like I hate when they touch animals don't touch animals leave the animals out of this especially dogs leave dogs out of this leave them out and also i know why there's peaches everywhere now that makes sense now to me too okay so i am about 75 ish percent done with this book maybe a little bit more i am quite enjoying it okay it took like 200 pages for me to get into but it's gotten so good. It's gotten so intense. The scene where Patricia, our main character, is hiding in 
like the vampire's house and that cockroach crawls up her ear like oh it's so gross oh my gosh i it's darker than i thought especially with the peaches on the cover and i love how it shows the injustices between males and females how males were treated treated back in the 80s versus how females were treated and not only that but how people of color were also treated compared to white or caucasian people so it has officially been a few days a little while since i finished southern book club's guide to slaying vampires by grady hendrix and i can officially give my final review i liked that i had a few days to process it um because i was going to rate it three stars but the more i thought about it the more i'm like okay it's not a three star book so overall this book had its ups and downs right but i feel like for the most part for a big chunk of it i was pretty bored to be honest the characters were pretty infuriating i couldn't stand the husbands i couldn't stand the friends for a while for a cool minute um i couldn't stand the guy that is the vampire you know like i he had no redeemable qualities which i get he's the villain but like even as the villain like i don't know i just i couldn't stand him at all he's annoying i don't like how the men always feel like they're superior which i get it's the 80s but that was like pissing me off a lot as well so i was bored and when i wasn't bored i was annoyed with a lot of either the characters or the situation or whatever have you so i'm going to probably and then plus like why do you have to do the dog like that okay i get the dog i guess i get the dog was good at first and then later on something happened to the dog i'm like why why do you have to mention that something you know it's not even a part of the story it's not a main point like why do you even have to mention about something happening to the dog if it has no addition no plot no n n it doesn't add anything to the story so i ended up rating this book uh two out of five stars that's my final opinion on this book i didn't like it i didn't like this one no hey you guys good morning so i started reading horror store i am about 16 percent in now and i so far i'm really liking it okay i'm really enjoying it i think it's really good and i just like the feel of it reminds me of like have you guys ever seen superstore the show like i picture the characters from superstore in this book that's what it reminds me of so so far it's really good and yeah and i like it. it just started um and you know they're finding stuff this uh bruca right there was filled with like feces and they decided you know what it's that's enough over like 11 percent. there's over 11 percent damage every single night and nobody knows what's happening and the cameras turn off after 2 a.m so that's why they have this like overnight task force and our main character amy is a part of that task force to find out what's going on overnight so so far it's 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 great so i am officially 75 percent done with horror store this book is so good okay i like it even more than the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires so far i love it i love it it's truly a haunting and the haunting is amazing and i absolutely love it there is gore and blood and creepy things and i am quite enjoying it right now i really really like it i heard the ending is what really splits people so i'm afraid of the ending but i'm like kind of coming up with all these scenarios and i'm like would i be okay with this yes would i be okay with this yes because up until now the story has been nothing but fascinating and i love it hey you guys so i have officially finished horror store and 
I rated it four out of five stars. I really liked it. I thought it was different. I loved how it was very much like Ikea and I can't even imagine being to an Ikea store. If you've been to an Ikea store, I can't even imagine how it would be like overnight. I love how the story progressed. I love how we started off with the adorable furniture, you know, the everyday furniture that people have. And then it slowly becomes more and more like gruesome and here I'm trying to show you. It slowly just becomes more and more gruesome and then we get to like crazy torture stuff. I thought it was really different. I thought it was very fascinating and I loved the gore. I loved our characters. I loved our main character. She, I don't know, I, I liked it. I really enjoyed it. I liked this one even more than the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires because I feel like that had like a lot of slow points where I was a little bit bored from time to time and this was very consistent and like I wanted to keep reading it. The ending, I can see why people were like, eh, about the ending because once again, it's a very up in the air ending. You're not getting a concrete ending. You don't know what happens next. And it's not like there's a sequel to this book. So if you are looking for like a concrete solid ending, like this is what happened, end of story, you're not gonna get that with this book. Just like Verity, I explained that with Verity, you don't get a concrete ending. This one, you also don't get a concrete ending. It leaves you to form your own conclusions. And this one I do wish that I had got in a concrete ending. So that's what sort of like lowered, I guess, the rating a little bit. Uh, the pacing was very fast. And once the haunted and the paranormal elements started getting into the story, it picked up real quick, like real quick. It went from zero to 100 really fast. So if you're looking for something that's very fast paced and very fast and easy to read I would definitely pick this one up it was really good so once again that's that's horror store so we're gonna move on to the next one I know I did not do a 25% update for this book because I'm actually 50% 50% in 50% into this book I am on chapter 19 and I am enjoying this okay i'm enjoying this book so freaking much i'm listening to it on audio because i have a lot of laundry to fold because like i said we're moving or we're we're already we've already moved into our new place but we're still going through stuff and point is i have a lot of stuff to do today <laughs> and i am really enjoying this okay at first the characters, Mark, the brother, was annoying the crap out of me so badly. But now that I'm halfway done with it and I'm like starting to know the characters more, I'm really enjoying this. The creep factor on this book is phenomenal. Like this book is creepy. It has dolls. It has clown dolls out of all dolls and like you know like creepy puppets there you go puppets puppets and haunted houses and psychological things going on and I'm just obsessed like my mind is already reeling and I'm like is this paranormal or is there not something paranormal going on and it's all it's reminding me a lot of Home Before Dark by Riley Sager right now I'm really enjoying this like right now as of right now I don't I can't say if it's going to continue to be that way, but as of right now, this is looking like a five-star read for me. So I am 75% done with How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix, and so far, like I said, this is becoming my favorite Grady Hendrix books so far. I am obsessed. It is creepy. It is scary, and I am loving it. It is giving me very much like Annabelle chucky vibes but specifically annabelle and oh uh, i'm like oh uh, it has me creeped out so my fiance left and he took the kids and it's nighttime um while i was finishing cleaning to go get ice cream and <sighs> he doesn't know what type of book i'm reading and then a lot when a scary scene is happening i walk into my room with and this is what i see and it 
scared the crap out of me. Oh my, I called my fiance screaming, screaming, and my kids are just laughing, and he's just laughing, and I'm like, how dare you? Do you have any idea? The book that I'm reading is about a haunted doll, about a haunted puppet, and then you dare, you dare to literally, uh, and it was like during a scary scene, so I literally almost had a heart attack. That's so messed up. That's so messed up. But like I said, right now it is looking like a freaking five-star read. I am obsessed. I am obsessed. This book is so good. All right, I finished it. So first thing that I have to say is you can't go into this book expecting logical explanations. This is a book that's very much more fun and very up in the air. And the more you start to think about certain aspects logically, the less and less they make sense. So you can't in go into it like I originally did, thinking it's like a psychological thing over thinking too much in depth and thinking too logically into it because it's not that at all going into this book you have to expect a fun time not a mental breakthrough not a deep meaningful novel but more like this is a good way to have fun <clears throat> and um because the more you think like i said i'm gonna keep mentioning this because i cannot stress it enough the more you think logically about certain aspects of this book the less and less it's gonna make sense and the less and less that certain things just don't make sense in this book um for one thing is i understand why it's called how to sell a haunted house but it's more focused on like a, the doll <laughs> and so i'm like why didn't they just call it the doll or the it's not even a doll it's like a marionette <clears throat> marionette slash like puppet should have called it the puppet but overall, I gave this book five out of five stars. I loved this. I it, I devoured this. I devoured this book. Yes, I'm finally giving Grady Hendrix a five star book. This one I loved, okay? The characters at first, I didn't enjoy them. I didn't enjoy the characters, but the more I got to know them and the more I realized why they are the way that they are, the more that I really fell in love with these characters, the more that I like that I really liked the backstory. However, like I said, there's so many unanswered questions. There's so many things that I'm like, well, this doesn't make sense, but it's not supposed to. It's supposed to be a fun time. It's supposed to be more woo-hoo, woo-woo, and don't expect it to be this like a groundbreaking thing but it was but when you put your mind in that in that headspace like this is supposed to be fun it's just a really good really good read I had a really good time I could not put it down that I literally listened to the whole thing in one sitting because I was that obsessed with it so this is by far my favorite read this month and everything that I've read and one of my top books that I've read this year this is definitely one of the top books that I've read this year I have to say this is like my like my second or third I'm really I really enjoyed this one so this has taken the top spot for me <laughs> Hello you guys, I'm here to give you guys an update on my best friend's exorcism. So I am listening to How to Sell a Haunted House on audio, but I am physically reading this book. I started yesterday and I am 40 percent, like 39%, 40% into this book. And this one I'm also really enjoying. And this one I feel like it picks up very fast, and this one is very fast paced for me. It's maintaining that pace that I really enjoy so I'm really liking it um it looks like the best friend has already uh gone she's already been possessed after that night in the woods which this is not a spoiler because it says it right here in the back so she just got possessed and she's experiencing these weird symptoms and you're kind of like ooh, like what is going on here so I'm really enjoying it so far um and yeah finished I finished it and I have so many thoughts and the ending was very bittersweet very bittersweet it was a beautiful ending but it was so sad beyond belief 
but then again it's just such a life and once I've had a day to process my thoughts I will come back with the final review hello you guys it is me so I am back with my full review for my best friend's exorcism exorcism why can't I talk after now that it's been like about 24 hours since I've been able to process everything that went on in the book so uh let's let's go ahead and talk about it first of all this book was a lot more fast-paced compared to like the southern book club's guide to vampires compared to the we sold our souls the book that i'm li listening to on audio right now it's a lot more fast-paced than that one than those two for sure um even more than horror store i want to say there wasn't really any dull moments moments where i was like drowsing off or anything like that um it was a lot more like kept you like wondering like ooh, what's gonna happen next um not even what's gonna happen next just like vastly entertained you know and there's a few things that kind of bothered me like for example we have the whole dog incident like and I don't like I'm just gonna say it, like I don't know why Grady Hendrix has this habit this is two books now where he has this habit of like killing off harming and then killing off dogs and I'm like why do you why do you need to do that like I don't I'm very sensitive it could just be me because I'm very sensitive when it comes to animals especially dogs specifically but why do you need to kill off the dog like what's what is the purpose of that is it because you want them to feel some certain emotion but it's like I don't know why that that's like this is a second book that I'm reading where he kills off the dog and I'm like why why does that need to happen and then the ending I really enjoyed the ending overall it was very bittersweet it had you feeling some type of way and like staring at the wall because when we read a story we want to escape things that you know that we experience in our day-to-day -day lives we want to know what would it be what it would be like when we have a happy ending what would it be like in this fictional world where friendships last forever and romance and love last forever However, with this book, you get hit with the cold, hard truth of what life is, how friendships really are, realistically speaking, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and it just leaves you with this, like, feeling, like, just this, I don't know how else to describe it other than just very bittersweet. Like, it's beautiful yet sort of traumatic if that makes any sense you know like this is who we are as humans but in the end like we still just want to feel and share experiences and and love i don't know so i ended up rating this book four out of five stars because of that ending i really enjoyed the ending it was a very different ending. It is definitely not what I was expecting. Just the most bittersweet, like, had me staring at the wall and just, like, contemplating life. And just my relationship with my best friend. And, like, how it's going to be 10 years from now, 20 years from now. And, like, how things just happen. How life just happens. And I don't know. It's just... It, it, it really... This one, this one hits deep. This one hits deep. So in the end, this was four out of five stars for me. However, it would have been a higher rating had a dog not died. Because why do you need to do that that often? Okay, it's not about a dog. It's not Cujo. It's not, we don't, that did not. That didn't need to be in there to get your point across. It, it didn't. Okay, so first of all, my daughter did my makeup, so there's this, there's that. But I am 13% into We Sold Our Sol Souls by Grady Hendrix, and so far it's okay. 
you know, I, I get the sense that our main character is not all that great. She's a little dull. She doesn't seem to have much um, drive for life, which I guess it's the, is the point. <clears throat> but it's okay so far. She has a dead end job. She it's just she doesn't have much going for her. And we're going back and forth between like the eighties and the two thousand, like two thousand thirteen, I believe. It's it's okay. Yeah, this one uh, this one's already feeling like a meh. It just started so it could it could change okay so i am about 50 percent done with we sold our souls this is another one that i'm listening to via audio this one i'm a little bit confused so we're following our main character which is chris and then we suddenly get inserted into several chapters where we encounter a new character named melanie and i'm not exactly sure where melanie falls into the storyline like it's not chris which is the main character that we follow who was a part of the band who apparently like had her soul sold to the devil in order for this guy to become famous or whatever and out of it she got like a five hundred thousand dollar settlement but she didn't know that she technically sold her soul but I'm trying to figure out who this Melanie person is because I cannot for the life of me figure it out. Like how is she tied into everything? I, I, I don't know if I missed that part because the whole time, the whole time I thought we were following Chris and the whole time that I've been listening to the audiobook, I don't know why I always thought that it was Chris and I didn't realize that we were following sometimes a different character named Melanie, Melanie until several, several chapters ago and I'm like, wait, who's this? And so I'm like, did I miss something? So I'm a bit confused. Um, we kind of know the story now of why these things are happening and this adventure that Chris goes on to try to save her soul isn't what i was expecting it to be and it's very it's a bit anticlimactic so far so there's that hiya so i realized that i never did a full review for we sold our souls so i guess i should be re doing a review on that one so i do have the physical copy but i did end up just listening to the audio just because it was much faster and i don't think i would have probably gotten through it if i had read it and not listen to the audio, I probably probably would have DNF'd it. So when I first was reading it, I was thinking it's gonna be a three star. I thought it was at least gonna be a three star. But again, just like the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, as I started more thinking more and more into it, I'm bumping it down to two stars. Anyways, as I was saying, I knocked it down a star because I only remember all the parts that I didn't like about the book. So, first of all, infuriating characters. Again, Grady Hendrix is this thing where he tends to make the men sort of superior to the women until, like, the end when the woman reclaims her power. And this power struggle, I, I hate it. I hate it so much. It's not at all what I was expecting. It was such a letdown. And I, nah, I just, I didn't like it. I just didn't like it. There's nothing else to say except like, I, I just did not care for it. So two stars, two stars. Anyways, you guys, that is it for the reading vlog. So overall, did my intuition let me down? Well, I guess yes and no, because some of these books were a disappointment, but there were other books that I really enjoyed. For example, How to Sell a Haunted House is one of my top five books so far of 2023, and I have read almost 50 books so far this year. So being among the top five, that's, that's a win for me. My Best Friend's Exorcism and Horror Store are both four stars, so they are both books that I greatly, deeply enjoyed. However, the other ones were a little bit of a letdown. 
However, I did see a constant theme throughout Grady Hendrix's books. For a couple of his books, he likes to kill off the dogs, and I'm not a big fan of that. There's also, I don't know, some certain sayings that he would say about, like, race and things like that. And even though I know it's taken place, like, in the 80s and the 90s, I, I don't know, it still kind of irked me a little bit and rubbed me the wrong way. And then we have the whole power dynamic where it seems like men always try to be more superior to the women, even though he mainly has female main characters. And then we have a lot of infuriating side characters that end up having redeeming qualities towards the end for the most part, but that's not always the case. And just to read an infuriating character in every single one of his books, because it's, it really is a consistent theme, is slightly annoying and puts me off from reading any more of his further works because there is that consistent theme. There is certain words that kind of trigger me. There's the whole thing where he likes to kill off dogs. And then there are the men are superior sort of vibes. And then there are the infuriating characters. So all that put together, we're just gonna say for the most part, I guess, I'm gonna have to say that my intuition was a little bit off. What well, was a little bit off? It's okay. We just need some crystals. We just need some meditation. We just need some chakra tuning. I need to lay naked by the moonlight and maybe I'll be okay after that. So let me to try those things and then we'll try this intuition thing again with another author. I'm thinking Darcy Coates. So anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.